Welcome to the ultimate pull-up tutorial. Today, you will learn the A to Z of pull-up training. Everything from how to get your first pull-up, increasing the sets, the reps, progression models, and even advanced variations. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start off with the basics, being how to get your first pull-up. To do this, you're going to perform the negative portion of the exercise. This involves jumping on top of the pull-up bar and slowly lowering yourself back down. I personally recommend that you use an underhand grip when doing this because it will be the easiest for the vast majority of you. In terms of sets and reps, I recommend that you do as many right before failure, so leave one rep in the tank and do about three to five sets, right? This will teach you the movement pattern of the pull-up, get used to holding your body weight, and it will develop the necessary grip, back, and bicep strength needed to do the full range pull-up. So once that's done, you're also gonna perform the isometric holds. Now, isometrics radiate 15 degrees in all directions. Therefore, if you want full carryover to your complete pull-up, I recommend that you hold it at the top, the middle, and the bottom. Each isometric hold should be done for approximately three to five seconds. And in terms of the sets, I'm gonna recommend five sets. So do these right after your negatives, and you should find amazing carryover to your full range of motion pull-up. To complement these isometric holds, you're also gonna do the scapula pulls. Now, the scapula pulls will teach you how to engage your back correctly when doing pull-ups or chin-ups, because most guys, they pull with their biceps and they're not engaging the lats correctly, which is why they don't feel it. So if you do these scapula pulls in combination with everything I just showed you, it will build the entire range of motion of the pull-up and it will help you use the correct musculature. Now, if you can't do anything that I just showed you, then it's time you start incorporating some bands. This is great because you're actually going to achieve the full range of motion pull-up and develop the movement pattern exactly. The only difference is that it's accommodating your weight, so you're not actually supporting 100% of your body. Now, the band you're seeing right now is a monster mini band, but I would say that as you get stronger, you want to eliminate the band tension completely. So you want to progress to a mini band, a micro mini band, and then eventually do no bands whatsoever. And it's either you'll be able to do the classic pull-up right off the bat, or you'll have to repeat the steps that I described at the beginning of this video. But that said, try out the band pull-up either in combination with everything I just showed you, or in isolation if you're trying to use it as a build-up point to the negatives and the isometrics. Once you could do about five to 10 pull-ups, it's time that you start progressing. And my number one recommendation is to do it with weights, either by getting a dipping belt or a weighted vest. This will make your progress extremely easy to track and it makes your training a lot more fun because now you can easily go from a 2.5 pound plate to a five pound plate, then to a 10 pounder, then a 25 pounder, then a 45 pounder. Next thing you know, you're repping out over 135. And that's when you know you've made it. And personally guys, I've observed that everybody who gets a big back from pull-ups, pretty much all of them do it weighted. So you should do it weighted and in particular, you wanna incorporate all the different variations like I'm showing you right now, because this will help overcome the biological law of accommodation and will build the strength in various joint angles. So you don't wanna just be doing one style. Instead, rotate, use the wide grip, the regular grip, the underhand grip, and the neutral grip. They all have their pros and cons. Some are easier than others, and you will benefit greatly from it. So in terms of sets and reps, I recommend three sets of three, three sets of five, five by five, three sets of six to 10 reps, five sets of six to 10 reps, and even 10 sets of 10. Furthermore, feel free to incorporate back offsets and ramping sets to really add to that progression. In addition, I would incorporate the greasing the groove method, which involves doing pull-ups every single day. However, you do not go with the failure. So if you have a pull-up bar, definitely make sure to use greasing the groove. And with that said, you should have everything you need to make the best strength gains possible on pull-ups. If you wanna spice up your training, then try out these advanced pull-up variations. Now these can either be done in isolation or to complement your weighted pull-ups. Personally, I think you should do it all because you don't wanna have any weak links and by doing everything, you will acquire the strongest pull-up possible and the best back and bicep development. So definitely make use of high exercise selection. Don't be a minimalist and don't just rely on a few different moves. So try out this one, for example, the one-arm negatives. That's really gonna be hard on your biceps and back and it's gonna add as a nice progression for the classic one-arm chin. Uh, try out the archer pull-up as well. It's basically assisted, you need rings to do this, and uh, you just pull to the side. And again, it's gonna help you build up to the one-arm chin, which is a very impressive feat of strength. 
Uh, as well, you can perform weighted isometrics with rings. You see, isometrics were used to build your regular pull-up when you were not able to do them. But now, you can actually use it with heavy weight to get carryover. Why would it not work? You can do weighted negatives, you can do weighted isometrics. It has the exact same benefits, but now you are building strength for a stronger way to pull up. Uh, these techniques are gonna help you as an advanced lifter. Uh, same thing with negative uh, pull-ups off the bar, like weighted, you know? Try out all this stuff. And in particular, I recommend, if you're gonna be doing these overloads, use uh, 40 to 60% more than what you could raise. Now, if you wanna be more explosive, then try out the clap pull-up. Again, this is like plyometrics. Actually, it is plyometrics. You're getting maximum velocity and you're really gonna build that explosiveness, man. So this is gonna build that speed. It's kinda like speed benching, but you're doing it for pull-ups. And then if you want my favorite, try out the weighted ring pull-up. Rings are fantastic because you can rotate and it's a nice way of attacking uh, your back and arms in a slightly different way. So with that said, those are all the advanced pull-up variations that I feel will benefit you the most. Obviously, it's not everything of all time, but I hope you enjoyed this pull-up tutorial. So that's it, guys. I pretty much showed you all the variations regarding pull-up training. Uh, some are advanced, some are a little bit easier to do, some are weighted, some are not. Point is, try to incorporate all of them and spice up your training a little bit. Don't just be stuck on the classic weighted pull-up or the classic regular pull-up, you know? So that said, if you want more content like this, let me know, and I'll talk to you all next time.